Starting off the top tonight at 10, dramatic video of a violent shooting has a DC neighborhood on edge. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. DMV is definitely in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, right now I got my boy Phantom Loke. We got Harlem Swift. We got Avenue Trey. And joining them this time, we also have Lil Harlem Swift and Psycho Loke. Remind everybody out there what the name of your neighborhood is. Rolling 30, original Harlem Avenue, Crip, cuz. Dirt Gang of Dope Bang. Let's start off with some bullshit. What do you guys say? At 6'9 six, at six, <laughs> at six, at six, versus Meek yeah, Mill. We always love we always love about the bullshit. That 6'9 six, six, versus Meek oh, Mill shit. Was that, was that stage? Talk to me, man. Now that was some that was funny as shit. You're a clown for that shit. How you gonna talk all this shit and then all of a sudden they can run up on you and you froze up? I don't give a fuck if there is. You know what I'm saying? He has his personal security and all that shit. Down on what you say, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Don't fold. You know what I'm saying? Niggas talking all that shit, but then when it's time, when the pressure is on, you XP because you freeze up, nigga. You just lost all your points, nigga. Contradicting that, cuz real talk. So you think I'm gonna speak on that too, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Nah, I was gonna say, man. So like the thing about that is, man, my personal opinion. I didn't see the video. I heard about it. <laughs> you know, I, I, cuz went out backwards, man. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, cuz I'm gonna be real. Like I think the rap industry is the most contradicting uh, business industry to get into because every the money flows off of being a thug. And you, you perpetrate yourself as being one if you're not from an actual hood. And then when you get into a situation or something where you have to, you know, you got to bang on someone, you know what I'm saying, or defend yourself, you know what I'm saying? If you freeze, you lose all your credibility. But if you do something, you get you go to jail. Yeah. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, if, you do. You know, if I was in that situation, if he if pulled rap on me, you know, he would have caught the hands, you know what I'm saying? And that's just that's just my background. I don't know Meek Mills and anything. I don't know what. I don't know if he's really from where he's stayed from, but, you know, I think it's one of those situations where, you know, one of the rappers, man, they talking all this smack and, you know, all the smoke, and then when it comes into your face, then boom, and, and now even your whole fan base, you probably lost, you know, half of your fan base because they thought you was a thug. And then when the thug was supposed to come out, you know, hopefully he was hiding behind the dumpster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know, man, but he kind of went out backwards, man. Definitely this be. avenue, this avenue, Trey. Oh, yeah. Isn't this ain't that ain't ain't Weak Mill the same bitch ass nigga that went to jail for riding a fucking bike? Popping the willy. <laughs> Wait, how you gonna jump riding a bike? <laughs> what? Listen, look, 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 all my niggas, you know, say half my half my niggas is just coming home from doing bitch. Nigga, you went to jail for fucking doing a wheelie. <laughs> Get the <laughs> fuck out of here, cuz. Are you serious? <laughs> a fucking wheelie validates you oh, as Mister Two One Five. You embarrassed in Philly right now, bro. I, I would love to hear a few of your your uh, input on this because we didn't get to dive into this last time. But what what are your general thoughts on rappers, singers? You know, Lil Wayne, Chris Brown. You know, people like that who actually join gangs after they become famous. <laughs> oh man, that's a good one. <laughs> you want to speak on this uh, one first? Hey, hey, who, you want, who you want to go? Yeah, <laughs> we can all, we can all. Yeah, just one at a time. Go for yeah. it. All right, so this this time, this this is my whole thing with it. You know what I'm saying? You was already out there doing your thing, looking to do what it do. You know what I'm saying? Everybody talk about Nissy Hustle. You know what I'm saying? That's my homie. But Slim Doug was already doing that shit. Master P was already doing that shit. They was buying up their neighborhoods and giving back. Actually, buying up like boarded up shit that nobody wants. Like. Like the homie Project Pax Day. You see the power with most of my they ain't got no vision. You see that building over there? It was it was nothing. I brought it from nothing and I turned it into something. So as long as you give it as long as you know what I'm saying, you give it back, the the thing is to give back and bring something back to the table. Mm-hmm. Not go back back go backwards and keep putting homes backwards and backwards and backwards. That's never gonna like progress or transpire into something beautiful, like, to move forward with it. You know what I'm saying? So if you're going backwards and you're not putting nothing back into your hood or the block, whatever you're claiming or whatever you're pushing, then these the priorities you wanted to. Then I don't understand, like, you know what I'm saying? 
niggas go somewhere else to be this be this tough person. You gotta be like that twenty four seven all day, every day. And it's not about being tough, it's about being smart. You work smart, not hard. So you going if you going backwards if you going backwards and doing that shit, there's nothing wrong with you. That that's my personal thing with that. On D G. Anybody else wanna that's chime in? I go, you wanna chime in? This is Phantom Low. This is my thing, specifically with Chris Brown, all right? How is it that you made all this money, right? You sing all these R and B songs that made the girls, you know what I'm saying, back in the day at middle school fall in love with your ass, you know what I'm saying? They the last dance and all that shit, and now all of a sudden you wanna be blood. Like nigga. First of all, is he even from Compton? That's number one. Yeah. Number two, <laughs> like you were like like nigga, why all of a sudden he's like you wanna be bloody, you got all this money, nigga? Like obviously the only reason I can see is like for the clout, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. Like, niggas not doing this shit for no damn clout. We actually take this shit serious. We we passionate about this shit, cuz. You know what I'm saying? And there's actually niggas out here that's more passionate than the next man, but at the same time we really passionate mm-hmm. about this shit. We take this shit serious. Niggas actually yeah. died over this shit. Niggas actually went yeah. to prison for this shit. You know what I'm saying? And just seeing niggas, you know what I'm saying, doing this shit just for the clout and all that shit, like it's a fad or whatever. And obviously they paid their way, you know what I'm saying? Because he said, oh, the nigga, could throw up, the nigga throw up, can throw up the set in the music videos. He just can't be part of the set. Now, what's the point, nigga? Obviously, you niggas just using him as a mascot. Yeah. Like, like cuz. Like, nah, yeah. nah. Now, I'm gonna save the rest of my, for the rest of my local shit because they definitely got some shit to say about that. But go ahead, China. yeah, because like back. Chris Brown, Chris Brown, cuz just, just, just stop, like nigga. Same, same with Soldier Boy too, cuz you know what I'm saying. Y'all niggas need to quit that shit. And hold up, wasn't Soldier Boy a G? Was, was was he claiming folk? Was he claiming GD back in the day? And now all of a sudden you want to claim blood, like nigga, come on, cuz. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the, the other little talk about this shit because you know I'm, I don't want even want to hurt these niggas' feelings, cuz that's how bad it is. Just having a trade, man. I just got one question. I like, it. and this is just this is this is just this is just me. I, don't you find it kind of funny that all you niggas, you know what I'm saying? You come to the hood, you a superstar. So shouldn't it be that the niggas in the neighborhood should be all over you? Why are you all over them, my nigga? I don't understand that. Backwards, huh? That's that's that's, that's weird, bro. That's like I don't, I just don't understand it. If you the superstar back in the day, because when he saw you know like Whitney Houston come through, everybody broke their mother kneecaps to come running up her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Off the top tonight at 10, dramatic video of a violent shooting has a DC neighborhood on edge. Just give me a little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Another thing I don't understand is I don't, and I'm not putting the blame totally on Mac 10, because you know where I'm going with this. All I'm going to say is, we didn't, man, the 90s, well, you saw Snoop come out with the dog pound and the East Siders and all that, you know, everything was crip on one side. You feel me? Music-wise. The closest thing the niggas had to identify was, like, DJ Quick, but it wasn't really catching on. But when Tupac come on, the blood started to really, you know, feel themselves a little bit, you know? Gave them something to believe in on the dance floor. But then... As soon as Mac 10 starts hanging around motherfucking Birdman and Cash Money, it's like, did you just forget that these niggas had blue rags and they were kissing each other? And you now letting them be bloods now? When is that a fact? I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah, I heard if you Matter of fact, I'm gonna let Psycho. Go ahead, go ahead, let him talk. I'm gonna let Psycho handle this one, man. Go for it, Psycho. Come on, Psych. Let's try this in Psycho Loop. I just feel uh, this whole industry is weak. None of these niggas came up gangbanging and want to be gangbangers when they get in the industry. Mm-hmm. Lil Wayne, for a fact. Soldier Boy, Chris Brown, Quando Rondo. All the niggas are sweet in my eyes. Mm-hmm. These rappers, everything with these rappers is crazy. Half of them snitching, I don't do rap. 
So six nine out of the eight. Talking about Davies, ain't no real crap and all that other stuff. I'm like, this is big worm. Yeah. Big worm talk to me about, that Yeah, talk to me about that. Yeah, so Faze on Love was on a uh, Vlad interview. Wait, was it? Yeah, Faze on Love said uh, on an interview recently, and he got a lot of backlash. Talking about Vlad TV, right? Vlad TV? Yeah. Go for it, yeah. Phantom. What were you going to say? All right, I want to talk, talk based on this. Why is a blood getting so mixed involved in crip business? Exactly. Like, yeah. If it's if that if if that is so, you know what I'm saying, if Davies is supposedly, you know what I'm saying, then that is crip business. Specifically his set, which is the thirties. You know what I'm saying? That's thirty business. Thirties handle thirties will, you know what I'm saying, that that's politics right there. Thirties will handle that shit. That is no there is no place nowhere where it says, Oh, based on love, you blood, you need to get your opinion on this too. You know what I'm saying? Like, MC8 already pressed him over that shit, you know what I'm saying? Because that's not, a, you know what I'm saying? Like, if, if it's crip business, there's no reason why a Blood, GD, Neutron, you know what I'm saying, any other organization except crip, specifically their own set, need to get involved in this shit. There's no reason why they have, they have, they have, they have, to, like, they have the mindset, oh, I should put my nose in their business. No, because it's crip business. It's specifically crib business. That's the fuck off and mind your own goddamn business. Mm, yeah. Plain and simple. Anybody else want to speak on that? Well, I saw the joint. I saw so I saw that because uh, I, I I watch uh, I drive around a lot, you know, for work. So I always listen to interviews and everything. So I, I listen to a lot of your uh, interviews as well. But I did see that, and I think I think he's a civilian. If, if I got it right, I think he just grew up in a blood neighborhood. And he was trying to do it out of, I understand why he said it. He was saying it out of concern for Davies. But at the same time, you know, it, it's like, you know, growing up in the ghetto, like, it's like you have to choose between should I help this person, should I help this person? Because at the end of the day, it's not my business. You know, people lose their lives over trying to get in someone else's shit just to help a person. So I think it was the same type of situation like that. I think he was looking at it as a, as a, uh, as a, I mean, I, to be honest, my first opinion, I don't think he even knows Davies. You know what I'm saying? So he's going off an assumption. You know what I'm saying? So I think he should have just, I think he should have, that should have been a conversation that was, um, not live when it was out, you know, whatever on the interview. I think he should have, you know, spoke about that off of the camera. Mm-hmm. You know, cause that was, that was just his personal opinion. You know what I'm saying? But I think you should, you know, steer from away from doing things like that because you don't you can lose your life doing stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? It happens every day. Yeah, <laughs> Trying to be Mr. Nice it. to help someone else out, you end up getting clapped yourself. You know? And then I mean, there was a video. I don't know if you've seen it a while back ago, but there was a guy that was um, in a club and he saw his his, his uh, abusive boyfriend beating on this girl, so he did something about it, and you know they get into squabbling up. And then homeboy pulls out a gun and shoots him in the chest. The guy tried to help the girl out. And then she leaves right with the guy who shot, and shot the guy in the chest. And then he dies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah. So that's the perfect example. Yeah. Exactly. How you, 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 you waste your life for nothing. Yeah. You know, yeah. you try to help some girl out. And then she ended up leaving with the dude that ended up killing you. Yeah. So yeah. I just think it's just, Damn. you know, some things you got to just have a cold. It's not how to say have a cold heart, but you just got to. You know, you gotta move, move away turn from the right, situation. Yeah, yeah turn the other cheek, dog. Don't get involved. I'm the same way, man. If, if I see I, if I see a dude beating his girl, man, I have to. I, look, I'm sorry. Sorry for you. You know, as a civilian, maybe I'll call the police. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't fucking getting yeah. involved. You know what I'm saying? Um, you lose your life over it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Three, nine times out of ten, mm-hmm. the craziest thing is that people don't think like this. I mean, as human beings, we react off something we see and we're like, oh, this is the first time it's happening. Mm-hmm. Nine times out of ten, if a dude is putting his hands on his girl, Especially in public, that means he feels comfortable to be able to do it in public. So he's right. been doing it multiple times in private. Even private, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's just my personal opinion. I, I, I think he was, I think he was in the wrong. But after he talked to MC8, he was he was like, "You're right. Why do I get?" Get off the top tonight at ten. Dramatic video of a violent shooting has a DC neighborhood on edge. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace.
There was a big thing in December. A dude was uh, killed out here in L.A., and I'm wondering if you guys heard about it because he was an IG, a uh, big IG dude. You know, these people who go out and do dumb shit. Uh, he goes by the name of Block Boy, oh. and um, he would go to different neighborhoods. He would go to Grape Street Hood and, and just spit on their graffiti and record, you know, record doing it. You know, he had a bunch of, like, 15-second videos where he would go to different hoods, you know, PJ Watts and Nickerson Gardens and, and just diss, their, diss the hell out of their hood. And um, I started following the guy probably about a month or so before they found him dead in a car in the city of Lakewood, California, which is a nice city. It's damn near Mayberry. You know what I'm saying? Um, did you guys hear about this dude out there? <laughs> yeah, 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 this Avenue Trey. I heard about, is this the same guy that uh, was doing all those videos and he was always throwing up a whole lot of gang shit and then the mother just get his wig filled back and he was found in a car yeah, or something. exactly he was found in the car yep exactly yeah he would uh he would always say um the takers the takers the takers that was his that was his thing he would throw up gang signs he had a hat his hat to the back once you guys after this interview look it up it's block boy um but yeah yeah you you know it's the same person though to answer your question though Cause, thank, thank you because i remember you said okay, you had a video recently you had about what that's the one videos about yep yep me and alonzo like, yeah we had a couple I'm yeah that's the one right there like I'm just looking at him, like, bro, if he really from the, if he was really from the street, which you know what I mean, I don't know if he really was or whatever, you know what I'm saying. But if the coochie snitch nine is watching, you know what I'm saying, he needs to take notes on. Hey, look, that could be you because when he pulled up that day disrespecting Nip's mural, you know, Nip didn't want his respect. You know what I'm saying. So just imagine if he actually recorded that on Instagram live and people were actually able to put hands on him, he would probably be RIP. You know what I'm saying? And then we looking at also you go up in other people's hood, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't know what drama they going through in their mind. Like in somebody in LA, especially LA, yeah, bro. Yeah, kid. <laughs> somebody could have just like, you know, like first and foremost, I like to say twenty twenty, I hate that pandemic year. He's still going through it, but some of us that lost people to COVID and those that lost people to shootings, you know what I'm saying? And all types of stuff or whatever, you know? The thing is, the individual who loses somebody may not be from gangbanging activity, but just imagine you feeling some type of way. And the first thought is, I see this mother coming out here, you know, I just lost my, like, I'm just going to say it in my shoes. I'm just using this as an example. Yeah. I just buried my sister, man. Oh, man. All right. And then I'm right before. I appreciate it, man. You know what I'm saying? I just imagine if I was in, on some shit where it's like, okay, you know, you, you, you on the inside, you ain't, you know what I'm saying? You burning like the world. Yeah. But when you see a motherfucker that's over here talking about, I'm in your hood, I'm in your hood, what you going to do? It's like, bro, this wasn't even meant for you, but you caught it. You feel me? Yeah. You turned. You know what I'm saying? And see that right there, like the mindset, you know what I'm saying, is dangerous. You know what I'm saying? And you come with fire when you're doing when you're going in the zones, you ain't got no business going. I don't have no it's like this. Even though I'm a tattoo artist and I sell clothes and all that, I don't not I'm not going to this neighborhood unless I got business in this neighborhood. Other than that, I don't go to this neighborhood. There ain't a girl I'm talking to, I'm not going up over there. You feel me? And it's just survival, man. You got no family. Yeah. I got if I ain't got family over there, like if you wanted me to come out, you know what I'm saying? And meet you, and we had a you know face to face interview. All right, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? I have business being up over there, but if I ain't got no business being up over there, I'm not going up over there. And especially, this goes back to what we said in the past. We're not about to taunt nobody on social media, and you just allowing them to come get you, especially when you're in their hood and you on Instagram Live doing this shit. Like that's that. I mean, no disrespect to little JoJo, but I can't help but see little JoJo all over again, yeah, bro. To the to the max, right? Yeah, this is it. He started something that sadly is has is a trend now. This is right? Phantom Loaf. This is Phantom Loaf. Uh, yeah, like this is like what we said in the last interview. Like one thing, you know what I'm saying? Like we need to stop like being on live and like posting our locations on social media when we're still over there because you don't know, like what's going to happen. Like, you don't know if your enemy is like right around the corner or someone that despises you on the low. You never even knew that is just feeling like taking you out that specific day. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is just the time. This is just the type of time that 
days we're living in now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like we really, like, it's really hard to trust um, anybody for real, for real. Because, like, people, it's just so much hate going on nowadays. You know what I'm saying? And, like, in L.A. right now, for example, like, in L.A. right now, it, it like, since the beginning of the year, it's just been turned up oh, out there. I it's live just, out here, so like, I every know, single huh? day. I'm a severe. And even, even I. Like even out here, like even in the DMV area and all that stuff. Like we, you know I wanted what I'm to talk Same about shit. that next. Actually, I wanted to talk. Actually, oh, okay. yeah. Can I bring that up? Actually, because um, I follow DMV Hoods okay. and News. Shout out to DMV Hoods and News, um, and they, you know, I follow different YouTube channels just to kind of keep my ear to the street. And um, seems like DC was on fire in 2020 with the gunplay at last year. Apparently, in the whole DMV area. There were uh, 350 homicides and 200 yeah. in DC alone. Alone, dog. I don't know. You got. I'm sure you guys at least know shit is turning up over there. But you said DC alone DC, with 200. Dog, yeah, 200 alone. And this is a small <laughs> area. Yeah, Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. And they're not including Baltimore apparently. So apparently Baltimore oh, had their own. Say. Apparently Baltimore had like 300 just alone by themselves. They're not even including Baltimore in this, dog. Real talk. Look up the stats. Wow. I just confirmed it before we started the show. But apparently, yeah, last year in 2020, there were 200 homicides in D.C. alone, 350 in the DMV area. And you know what's happening in the beginning of the Yeah, it's crazy about that. I was almost I was almost one of them because I almost got I almost got a clap last year. Yeah, Damn. that's crazy. Yeah. I was I was up in Northeast and they could pull the dog out on me. <laughs> That's why I was saying, like, you know, this life is very real, man. Like, you know, I don't want to uh, catch up with your family, like, with the going into the whole neighbor situation. Like, man, I think that it kind of goes into your past question, too, because, you know, about the whole um, guys joining, you know, gangs that get on and everything. Like, you got to understand, man, the gang members, they're already looking, they're looking for trophies. You know what I'm saying? Especially if someone's fresh to the hood, they want to get their name out. And you, you got some clout on the on the gram, and you know, you know what I'm saying. They catch you slipping, they can go out there. Well, guess what? I killed so and so. He had this big child. Now look, now he even got stripes. I just think it's like you know, you just got to be careful out here. And I think a lot of people are doing a whole bunch of dangerous stuff to, to try to become you know famous and you know get rich and everything like that. But man, you know, it's, it, I mean, I don't know if you watch like a lot of these prank channels and everything like that, where they be going into the hoods and doing certain pranks, they get guns. Oh man, that's so stupid, dog! Yeah. I see that shit all the time. I don't. Yeah, I come across exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Somebody just so got popped for doing damn. that shit recently. Some dude just got killed for doing that for real? shit. Yeah. For real? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's the same. It's the same thing. Like you gotta understand, man. Like you gotta understand, civilians get killed for going into the opposite hoods in you know, in California, where in the raw cubs not even knowing. You got gang members who go get killed for try to go through the hood to, to get to the other side of the road. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And up getting, getting clapped. So imagine going ahead, going out and, you know, this is someone too. You know what I'm saying? And being in there thinking like it's all, everything is, is Gucci. Like, nah, man. <laughs> so yeah. you, you have a, you know, you give yourself a death wish. That's exactly what you it know? is. Dog. I always tell people like this, man. I always tell people like, we are not guaranteed to make it to a senior citizen. So you gotta live like almost every day, like it's your last. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm 25, and I almost was, a, I almost got shot and killed in Northeast last year, uh, 2020. Just like you were saying, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Out the top tonight at 10. Dramatic video of a violent shooting has a DC neighborhood on edge. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. I think I heard somebody else that wanted to chime in on that whole um, 200 murders alone in DC. It's it's random low, uh, yeah. Like and look what happened in the beginning of twenty twenty one. Bodies dropping more than ever. Not just L A, but like you know what I'm saying. Out 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 um where we are right now, especially like um out Oak County, like um it's just like it was like a time like the first month it was like an everyday occurrence. You know, it it was just like an everyday occurrence. And in fact, like one day I was like actually on the bus. Uh, going back to my crib and all that, and I actually passed the homicide scene. You know, that's how real it is. You no, know, all I saw was like a bicycle just laying there. You know what I'm saying? I think they already took uh, 
person to the hospital or whatever, but there was like a little, little blood, um, full of blood around there too and all that. You know, that's just how real it is out here. Yeah, so. let me let people know something real quick before you continue. You know, there are people probably in Chicago right now, you know, Los Angeles, Watts, you know, LA, whatever, who hear 200 murders and I'm like, man, that ain't shit. This is 200 murders in a very small area, dog. Not, you know what I'm saying, a big area like uh, Los Angeles or uh, per capita. This is a lot of fucking murders for a very small uh, area. Yep, just have a new trait. I was just like, well, people have to also know about the D.C. culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, our culture is, before, when, you, when you take away the crypt element, right, all of us essentially come from different neighborhoods. You feel me? Okay. It already don't like each other. And even in those neighborhoods, niggas might live in the same buildings as you. You might be just on the same floor, same everything. Your next door neighbor is the nigga that is going to either creep with your girl or the nigga is going to end up doing you in. Oh. You see what I'm saying? That's how close your enemies are. So when people adapt the culture on top of all of the confusion that you already coming in the door with, you got to understand, Crips got a lot of enemies. Blood's got a lot of enemies. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, most of us are not even concerned about another blood. Mm-hmm. be honest with you. What's the worst enemy? I'm more worried about Crips out here, yo. <laughs> I had my recent encounter with that. <laughs> Crips going up against uh, false flag and Crips. You know what I'm saying? You got Crips that's banging that six-point star and eight balls. From up coming over from other states, trying to push that shit, and they getting shut down left and right. You know what I'm saying? All it took was if we it was like if we not pushing that over here, don't bring it up over here. Now if you come up over from somewhere else on the East Coast, you're trying to bring that up over here because you're trying to mirror the practice from North Carolina and some of them that were in New York. Like nah, man, it's a no fly zone. And even New York and North Carolina right now, they're doing their clean season. It's a lot of you know what I'm saying? Crip on crip and crip against anything that ain't crip right now. Yeah. There's a lot of that going on. I'm not saying every blood is your enemy and not every look is your low. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's, you know, really transpiring. We lost, actually, last year, we lost, you know what I'm saying, one of the locs, you know what I'm saying, CIP to Measy, Easy Snow. We love the low, you know what I'm saying? He's gone, but never forgotten. And, you know, like the homies right now is, is turned behind this shit. You feel me? There's a lot of shit that's, you know, really affecting. And see, even when you're in a small city, it's not the size of the city that matters. It's about how many people really have your best interests. Because you might be, you know what I'm saying, you got a value system. Streets don't teach you how to have a value system. That comes from your household. It starts from the household. And you also have to remember this, too, the crypt got started by a bunch of 16-year-olds at one point when Raymond Washington was putting it together. So, and then when you look at even our hood, Harlem Godfather, back in, was it, 1962? They were already, you know, had they already had an idea of, okay, some of us want to be pimps, some of us want to be players, some of us want to be hustlers. Some of us, we getting down for the community, you know what I'm saying? And if you come up over here with this weak shit, you're going to get served. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get handled. Now, when you take that same mentality in D.C., and this is the most number one common misconception, just because you don't call yourself a gang, it doesn't stop you from operating like, you know, with the elements of tribalism. So when you say, oh, nah, we don't gangbang like y'all. Nah, nigga. You, you're in the car with your what? Your homie. You're in the car with your what? You got straps. Y'all about to go do what? Knock down who? The ops. What's the ops? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The busters. You you see what I'm saying? Busters, Mm marks, or whatever. You call yourself, oh, we're a club, or we're a crew, or we're a squad, or we're a clique, or we're a camp or a ward, or we're just a neighborhood. We're just the same element, homie. Mm -hmm. All you, all, really what you want to say is you just don't have a uniform. Mm -hmm. That's That's really all you're saying. That doesn't stop you from having letters or numbers with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. We got hoods that can walk in distance of each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
travel. Oh, <laughs> yeah. As the time goes by and the earth rotates, we gon' fly high up to outer space. Yeah. And we will never fall down. I'm one with the universe, call me the sound. The bass booming in your speaker with the microphone, I possess it's a heater. You better drop it, let go. You can't touch my beats or my flow. Nigga, Kevin Smith, my name, but not the director, we ain't the same, man. I'm a pimp by nature, inside of me is a god, the creator Pursuing my dreams, cause anything is possible, you know what I mean I wanna live comfortable, but gotta be clean But working every day from 9 to 5 in my thing I feel like a trap, can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time, overload, I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped, can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble. Trouble, trouble. One by one we start to subtract them Separate facade from who really bought that action Feel like I'm trapped In the room without a key Four walls surrounding me Stripping my identity Got me in the bubble to observe and deceive Take away my culture and my nationality Talking about double jeopardy and yeah. Double standard to killing my folks Like it don't even matter And when we gather Disgusted by the charades Bullets spray the crowd Target practice in the game No accountability So who bears the blame They want to see us violent To justify the change Back to how it used to be Obey or you get beat It's a different time You fuck with mine You feel his heat Not a threat It's a promise Real shit Got the music as a platform For I awareness I feel like a trap Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload I'm in trouble Trouble let me out of this box I'm a claustrophobic robot Who knows not what he does Cause they program my thoughts And they tell me support this And hate that person If I don't then I'm crucified And made to be worthless Does a penny with two holes in it Have a purpose When he smiles They don't really know What's under the surface I'm a product of pain Racism and cocaine I never tooted once But it's all of my veins That shit is all of my genes See, it's my destiny This is nothing new kid I'm just an old recipe A boring story That you've heard hundreds of times Blah 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 Wham 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 Hate my life And my parents both suck I'll never be like them Then you grow up, get married, and end up just like them For the most part, it's our fault we're trapped in this bitch Shit, they gave us the blueprint, our dumb asses they I feel this. like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble Trouble, trouble, trouble the top tonight at 10 dramatic video of a violent shooting has a dc neighborhood on edge just give me a little bit of peace a steady job is some food to eat just give me a little bit of peace a steady job is some food to eat just give me a little bit of peace steady in our last interview you know you get love you get hate in the comments but one um one thing that was that I got a few comments on was people saying, "Man, there ain't no gangbangers in uh in DC. We don't we don't have Crips and Bloods out here." And also, um, Aunt Glizzy was on Say Cheese, I think, a couple months ago, and he said the same thing. He was like, "There's man, we ain't got no gangbangers out here." Um, you know, as somebody, said, Aunt, what's that? He said Aunt Glizzy. Yeah, I oh, he said Ch Aunt, Aunt Glizzy or Chad Glizzy. Aunt Glizzy. Ch Aunt Glizzy is a whole family. Talk to me. Like, he, he's been ducking Davey Russell for a minute, and all he does is talk shit over Instagram, and nobody knows where he at. Mm. Shot Glizzy's a cold sucker. Yeah, that too. Wait, Shot oh. Glizzy said that? Oh, my God. I'm pretty sure Glizzy it was Aunt about I'm pretty sure it was Aunt Glizzy. But... Oh, my man, God. Man, put a whooping on a damn beat. Come on, man. Yeah, I don't even think he's that big anymore, is he? I don't even hear that about no, music no, yeah. Oh, so he dick riding. I done started yeah. some That's shit. What he did. Oh, yeah, he did Black get it. Black had to go get it. Matter, <laughs> his, oh, matter of fact, his ex was telling me about that shit. Yeah, and he went to Bethesda Chevy Chase High School. Oh, that's when he got this. Oh, that's when he got bitch slapped. Hold on. Oh, shit. He's a cold sucker. So it was Aunt Glizzy. Now, back, back on the topic. Now, 
you saying that these guys are saying there's no there was no Crips and Bloods in D.C., let alone the DMV area, right? Well, I'm about to shut that shit down right now. Now, <laughs> last interview, the homie Avenue Trade mentioned something about mentioned a movie called Meteor Man, right? Now, right. I'm about to mention a movie that's going to grab every single D.C. native's attention, and they know this is based on a true story. It's called Life, A Life of a King by, it has um, Cuba Gooding Jr. in it from Boys in the Hood. Mm-hmm. Now, there's this one scene, right, where Cuba Gooding Jr. was taking one of the students home to the apartment, right? And there were two individuals there next to one of the students' mom who was a crackhead, and one of the individuals walks up to her to light her cigarette. Now, check this out. Now, here's the attention grabbing part. Is what the dude was wearing, and this and a life of a king was taking place in D.C. during the 1990s, like 93, 93. Because the best the, thing, the best way to tell is because the 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 bus models that were running in the movie were 90 were 90 uh, model buses. But now back to the uniform. The dude had on a brown and blue flannel. All right. Blue jeans. Had a pair of Chuck Taylors. Uh, a pair of low. And then a, a black beanie that had the letter D on it. And then the last part of the uniform that is definitely right in your face is a royal blue flag hanging out his left pocket. And this is in D.C. now, during the 90s. So all these people that say there were no Chris and Bloods out there during the time, they was. The only thing was is that they weren't out there like they are or they're appearing right now because everything was under the, They just came, they just hit D.C. Hold up. Hold up. We got, we got more ammo for you. Hold up. This is Avenue Trey, and I'm about to shut all of them up down in the comments. For one, just because you don't know what to look for in the street, that ain't our fault. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to make it easy for you. You're just mad because you're late to the party. And it's a bunch of old heads talking this shit. So I'm about to really put it on blast. For all these And this is just a, this is just, this is called a common sense game. If your tree, if your weed is from West Coast, who you, who you doing the trading? Who you networking with? People from West Coast. That could be from anybody. You know what I'm saying? Black or Latino. You never know. So when you see that, you got, you know, elements over here that are spreading. Same thing with your your Midwest counterpart from Chicago. Because, you know, we got some GDs and we had some Blackstone Rangers out here. Not to confuse them with the Bloods in L.A., not from the jungles, but the actual Rangers from Chicago, where Steve Rogers came from. Mm -hmm. Some of them was out here. Now, if you notice, you're getting your dog from Midwest, you know what I'm saying? What networking or whatever? Guess what? Your Midwest gangs are now over here. Look at, look at. Matter of fact, the best bomb ass example: MS-13. Mara Salucha is Huge. ten thousand miles away from South America. What the fuck are they doing up here in a whole different country? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. They over here because you know what I'm saying. They see opportunity. Money. You feel me? If they want to be over here, it's like this. They coming from South America, homes. South America. Last time I checked, California is 3,000 miles away, bro. That's still within U.S. soil. You feel me? It ain't shit to catch a five-and-a-half-hour flight, set up shop, and shut these motherfuckers down and start spreading. The whole purpose of a trip is to multiply. The whole purpose of a blood is to defend itself and hold its own. If one is going up here trying to get some money. You don't think that the other one wants to get some money? And if they're like that, look at the essays. The essays are the same way. You're going where the money is at. It's just like a rapper on tour. If Snoop, Imagine if Snoop Dogg never went on tour. He would have never blown up. Nobody would even know about Long Beach. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Snoop Dogg had to get on tour. He had visual representation. He had his environment, his homies. His attire being fashion in every video. He took a tour to every major city around the world. 
Now you have Crips in Europe. You got Crips in the UK right now. Australia. Yeah, Australia, the Philippines. You got, you got, you got, you got Asian gangs, bro. Like, come on, man. Like this shit don't, it don't stay in one spot. It don't, man. It spreads like the COVID. And you know, and a and a bomb ass example of this, it's like. Even when you look back at 1993, you know what I'm saying? The war on drugs is a real thing. You feel me? Like, people were getting shot for something less than a size of a nickel. Oh, yeah. I'm 43, man. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I lived through it. Not directly, but you know what you know, I'm I saw it before my eyes. You feel me? I, yeah, so you so you understand. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at Rayford Edmonds and cats like this, Rayford Edmonds is from D.C. Alpo is from New York. Now, if these two have a connection, and they're only four and a half hours away by bus, you feel me? And they pulling up to each other's cities, they're doing what? Exchanging culture because they're networking. You know what I'm saying? Like, look look at hip-hop. Hip-hop is from the South Bronx, but now it's worldwide. It don't stay. It don't stay in one spot. It's going to morph. It's going to evolve. Today, Crips might be blued up. And the bloods might be redded up. Fast forward to 21. Guess what? Crips is wearing red, and some of the bloods is wearing blue. Oh, yeah. Clothes wise, not the rags though. Yeah. And, and I'm gonna talk about that too. Mm-hmm. Enemies can disguise themselves even with the rags on. You never know. All they gotta do is say, "Oh yeah, what up, cuz? Come up to the car, cuz." The whole time it's a car full of bloods ready to bust on you. Yeah. Police used to come snatch niggas up, throw them in the jail. You know what I'm saying? Throw them straight in the cell and then take their own car. And if it had tents on it, they're going to ride through their own neighborhood and ride on niggas. That's a tough ass camouflage drive by, man. That's a real thing. Yeah. Same thing they do over there, the same thing they do over here. Understand something. They The goal is for them to get us all. And for those motherfuckers in the comments, those are probably motherfuckers that are working. Those are probably the pigs right now trying to see if they can get something out of it. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I want to say about that is, you know what I'm saying? We be in the streets, right? You know what I'm saying? We, be, you know what I'm saying? We represent. We put on. You know what I'm saying? see us in the street. They used to have no crip, no blood, no essay, no agent, no nothing. They just wolf it because, like I say, they don't want us here. And what they do is, well, if I was like the the crash units here. Well, they see the problem, and the problems occur. First thing they do is get a activist, a gang member that might actually be over here from up, from up over there to ask them to these guys real. Once they can get enough voucher going for like, all right, yeah, these guys are real, but a lot of the LA guys like to do that is up over here. I ain't gonna say their name. I ain't gonna uh, mention their names, but people in the city know who they are. What they would do is, you know, to throw them over, tell them, well, if they're not knowing enough, if they just mind their business, you don't have a problem. They would, so what the units over here like to do is, they don't want to hear that. That's not a good enough answer. So then what they do is, they go to the L.A. and have a gang unit from L.A. to come over here. And then that gang unit from L.A. would start identifying what what is what, who's real or who's fake, what guys are serious or what guys are not serious about it. So basically what I'm saying is, like I say, they see us in the streets and people don't run up. And people know where we at. We have most of the toughest areas in this in DC. That because you don't see us, that don't mean we're not here. This is Sam Lowe. I want to touch on one more thing about this. Go for it. So basically, like like I said, now back to the movie. The only thing was that at that time, like a lot of this shit was underground, right? What are people seeing now? It's not really even new. Like, they say, oh, why? Since when do everybody start wearing flags? Like, people out here have been wearing flags. The only thing is that now, the only difference is that back at that time, back in that time, everything was underground. It was, like, very secretive. Like, operate, not get shut down. Yeah, we were, you know what I'm saying? It was a certain way niggas was operating. But now, all that's happening is that it's finally coming up to the surface. This really started coming around the surface, like, around... Like during two thousand, when the Bloods was having their um, you know, same moment, and then the Crips started having their moment. But you know, like the Crips started having like coming up, especially now. But like I said, this shit is not new. 
especially in DMV, in DC, it's not new. This has been here. Everybody got a family member from somewhere. And everybody got a family member from somewhere else. So you don't think they're going to bring that shit back over here? Shit, look at Tookie Williams. He's from Louisiana originally. Mm -hmm. Turtles from Texas. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. Out the top tonight at 10, dramatic video of a violent shooting has a DC neighborhood on edge. Just give me a little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. This little stuff, I want to speak on that too. Because, see, the thing about that is, you know, for people in comment sections, is that, I'm going to be honest, a lot of people. They they just think that they have to look at someone wearing a flag to to see an active gang member. I mean, I'm sure Dusty Vision, as you know, like you're in California right now, you don't that a month and have to have a rag on to show you're affiliated. Could be, exactly. It could be your shoestrings, yeah. your fitted cap. There's a lot of things that people don't even know. A lot of people don't even know that fitted yeah. caps are affiliated with hoods. Like that's the number one thing. Mm -hmm. There's you know, okay, if you got red strings on, if you have blue strings on, I bet. Uh, if you have a long belt on, is a bandana belt? If you have a, a fitted cap on, you know, there's a so there's so many things to tell. Like you know, I'm saying I educate you know people close to me who are civilians just to to know what to look for if they're going to see, know where they at. Because I mean, you can easily find out what type of hood you in if you know what to look for, and you'd be like, oh shit, okay, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying depending on where you at, like you don't have to. Someone doesn't have to wear their flag, you know. what I'm saying, up if you wear their flag, don't get me wrong. But that's not the only thing that, you know, someone should be looking for. I just tell you know everybody one of the main I just tell everybody coming to California, if you come to visit, you know, on vacation, just leave all your baseball caps at home. I don't care if you're a Chicago <laughs> yeah. Bears fan. Yeah. Like leave all of your yeah. D Detroit Lions, leave all that shit at home because every cap is affiliated yeah. with something out here. Where you from, Cub? Exactly. <laughs> exactly, right? I'm, <laughs> look, I'm from Detroit. Cause. I just like the Lions. <laughs> you know, I ain't trying to hear that, Cub. Hey, yo, Crip Street, get them, Cub. <laughs> Pack them out. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah, man, like, you know, people got to look for shoestrings. People got to look for fitted caps, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's crazy out here, man. But, don't. I mean, for the, for the people who, you know, are listening to this, you know, I understand that this is a, it's a culture, you know, every – and it's just, you know, I'm not going to say the scariest thing for being a civilian would be that, you know, it's like you said, every cap is affiliated with a different hood. That is huge. If you understand how many city caps are out right now, you will get a big the picture. The Nationals proudly, nigga. The Nationals is that W for the West. Yeah. Yep. Crazy. Yeah, man. Because yeah, you have got a, white a white T, everybody, that's a funny thing. White T-shirt, yeah. <laughs> Check this out, though. You've been wearing a crisp color scheme your whole entire life and never realized it. All you niggas that think that, oh, they only wear blue and they only wear red. Okay, yeah. check this out, dummy. Yep. You wearing a white tee and blue jeans and no bandana and no hat on is still crippling. You know why? Because a blue rag has white paint and tint on it. Don't think you slick just because you got a black tee on and blue jeans, too. You really, motherfuckers don't even know it. But you've been, for the past 40 plus years, you've been wearing a Santana Block Compton Crip color skin. Oh, yeah. You just late to the park. You know, NWA, uh, my boy Sag uh, mentioned on my show that uh, NWA, that's pretty much where they got their look from, was from Santana Block, the whole black look. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Shit, man. They, they, they need to cut him a check, though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they ain't paying niggas, like, though. <laughs> Santana Block, I want to say one thing to Compton. Hey, salute to Hub City, man, because. Your color scheme, my nigga, and your fitted and your, but the way it was so simple, the whole world rocked your shit. Yeah. Nah, real shit. Yeah, Look it up. Every city, everybody. Black and gray. Yeah, where's that? Well, everybody, everybody, everybody wears that look, man. I shit, I restaurants. I, when I went out L.A., bro, in 2017, matter of fact, and I just came back recently from the holidays, bro. In certain restaurants, they won't even let me come up in there with a white tee on, bro. Oh, yeah. They got the shit whacked out before I even go to... Oh, you can't come to the door? <laughs> oh, that's definitely... Yeah, I Shit, I grew up in the era... Sit down, man. Yeah. When I went to school, when I was coming up, you couldn't wear Raiders gear. You couldn't wear... Do you guys remember... You probably don't remember this, but there was a shoe called British Nikes, and it had BK on the side. I heard about oh, that. Oh, so yeah, the Chris Carr Sporting Ninja. Yeah. Nationwide. 
Yeah, that was with the Lokes yeah, before the Lokes, yo. Yeah, we took it back yeah. to the Crips and Bloods album. Hey, hey, was that so? Hey, I'm, real talk. Were you guys banging that Crips and Bloods album out there? Like the first one? You know, not, maybe not necessarily yeah. you guys, but. Maybe I'm banging on guys. wax. Yeah, banging on wax. Yeah, man. I used to go hard, man. Yeah, you know the best record, man? Parula. The way he's seven on Slav, <laughs> yeah. Man, that's my favorite record. I love that record, Which bro. One? The Teddy Pendergrass. Pyro Love, right? Oh, my God. I, I know. That mother... And I've heard many Crips say that they used to low-key bump that when the homies weren't around. They used to bump Pyro Love. I've had <laughs> several uh, cats on here yeah. say that. I ain't going to hold, I, I gonna hold you, though. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to the Bloods, but you know what I'm saying? My favorite joint on that joint was Slav Keep On Slipping. <laughs> that was my favorite joint. They all, they all, they all, they all the, the Bloods that had my favorite joint was, was, was uh, Rip. You know the giant rip plus a hair. I ain't okay. gonna say that word, but you, okay. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I was like, God damn, how the, I didn't have better things than us. I don't understand that goddamn part either. I remember oh, you talking about that. Yeah. My best friend yeah, lived in. Man, way better beast than us. <laughs> My best friend lived in <laughs> Kelly Park at the time they were videotaping the the steady dipping video, and his dad recipe would not. Nigga, yeah, his recipe. Recipe to A Wall from Kelly Park. Oh, uh, Kelly Park. Yeah, that's what's cracking. Yeah, and my Voodoo my, got a tip to him before he died. That's a piece of the homie Voodoo. He's from Kelly Park. Yeah, CIP. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, CIP the Voodoo. He was uh, Kelly Park. Yeah. Yeah. He had us hip to that shit. And then the other homies we had from Five Trey Avalon, you know what I'm saying? He, he got us hip to G said. Mm. Like, come on, man. It's a starting lineup, bro. This is Fam Low. Go for and it. only niggas that, that's been into the whole Crip and Blood culture out DMV know about this type of shit. None of these niggas, you know what I'm saying, that be like, oh, there ain't no Crip and Bloods out here. None of them niggas know about this shit. These niggas that's been always, you know what I'm saying, like this shit's been in us since a young age because. We know about this shit because this shit's been in us. Because like we can connect with this type of culture and like the traditional culture. I don't understand. I don't see it. That's my thing. Like you can you can walk the block and see where you tell who. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not hard to see them. Because a lot of niggas didn't even know on Pyro Love. You realize you're listening to a Crip sing the chorus, right? You know that's folk. Oh, that's DJ Quick on the. Uh, uh-huh. Wait, who was that? Uh, who said again? Was, this Avenue trade, you know, on the banging on wax that 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 uh that song Pyro Love, uh-huh. you know that's full clip singing the chorus, right? Gotcha. Okay, that's right. I did know that. And did you guys know that on the Steady Dippin', which is a Crip song, that sample that they have is DJ Quick, cops, cops, like that whole little scratch that they're okay. doing in there. Yep. That's yep. DJ Quick. Hell yeah! Mm-hmm. And every, was it? They, and they had two. I believe they, they had two versions of everything's going to see all right. Yeah, they do. You got one with genuine draft. That's Domino yeah, from Domino, Long Beach. Yeah, Domino man, Long Beach man. Salute, salute. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you had uh, then the one that was on the Nationwide with Riders album. It was they slowed it down. Like yeah. it was, was like, uh, everything's going to see all right. The Watch Franklin Crips was on there. The Fudge Towns was on there. Yeah. Avalon, I think they was on there too. Yo, rest in peace, like, B. Oh, Brazy, dog. How dope was B. Brazy, homie? Yo, B. Brazy. Yo, salute, my nigga, man. man. You from the Denver Lane? Yeah. Woo. I, I mean, I'm saying, I hope the Bloods don't get mad at me for this, but salute. Whoop, whoop. You know what I'm saying? Denver Lane, yeah. baby. Nah, B. Brazy was That's hard. That's high, bitch. It's my double ride. That's Sitting true. on the go one. Hitting that Hitting side, that side, to, side. to side. Hey, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace. About to crazy, come with man. the flow. That's stupid. Oh, Damn, man. Uh, you about to take me back, homie. That's crazy because, uh, yeah, as, as, a, as a regular dude, I love those albums. Just as a hip-hop nerd, I love that shit. And I just love how they came together for that shit. That was really big, dog. That was really, really big, man. Off the top tonight at 10, dramatic video of a violent shooting has a DC neighborhood on edge. Just give me a little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Uh, okay, everybody, some people might be hip to banging a whack. But I bet not a lot of people are not hip for this. A lot, a lot of people are not hip to rep your set. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was the one in 2011. Mm-hmm. 
That was like the fourth or edition. Or the two blue tapes, N-O-T-S. N-O-T-S, dog. Kiki Loco, man. Come on, dog. I go back. I'm a hip-hop nerd, homie. I had the blue tape with Metro on it. Come on and go yeah. with me. Come on over to my place. That shit was so f***ing hard. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, see, shout we, out to Kiki Loco, nigga, Thirty Nine Street. Yeah, he's Harlem, right? We oh, love yeah, you, nigga. Right. He is Harlem. That's right. Okay. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. I just connected. I know he was from Thirty Nine Street. I know he was from Thirty Nine Street. I knew he was Harlem, though. He's a Thirty Nine Street. All right. DNA, baby. DNA, baby. From yeah. Let's go. Man. To the half, to the eight, we love him. We love him. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, I gotta tell you guys, man, it's been a great f-ing conversation. I look forward to catching up with you cats every few months and talking hip hop and you know other shit like that. Um, before we go, I want to give everybody a chance who, who has some promotion because I know a couple of you guys do music. I know you got some clothing lines and shit. So I'm gonna just let you guys pass the phones around and and you know give your shots out and um, not shots out, but um, give your promote promote whatever you want. The floor is yours. Go for it. Shit, this Avenue Trey, man. Just letting everybody know. Shoot, man, the Avenue's Originals is back, baby. And for the fact, and I got a variety of stuff coming out, man. Shoot, just follow me at 3100 underscore Avenues underscore Originals underscore. And remember, just to give a every friendly reminder to everybody, yo, like, hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button to Dusty Vision TV, man. And shout out to Cyrus the Virus, my nigga. Yeah. Both third ass, salute. <laughs> Yeah, this is homie Holland Swift. I just want to touch up on the last thing. Uh, the last uh, first interview we did, I can honestly say we got a lot of feedback, even from like local people that's from the city, like that's from DC. We actually that interview right there actually stopped a lot of people from getting into the streets and wanting to get down with it, and, and wanting to a group or organization or felt as though they had or felt as though they had to be a part of something. And the only reason why, and I'm saying this from a fact, from a, a, a fact chat, because on my DM, I have gotten a lot of messages from a lot of youngsters that was 13 and under, and they appreciated that interview. Damn, that's dope. And for some reason, they were able to find us, and I'm like, you know, me, I'm like, not like paranoid, but, you know, I'm on my toes. I'm yeah. checking, I'm checking them, <laughs> checking them as they come through. Like who, who sent you? Who sent you? That's why. I you know this, what I'm saying? Man. The homie get the explain stuff. Oh no, I heard, I heard, I heard y'all interview, man. So I typed your typed your information in, pop right up. I just wanted to say, man, I like, I like, I like what I heard, and you know what I'm saying. I just wanted to know what kind of guidance you had for me. So we did get a lot of good positive so, feedback. Man. Right, and mostly got a lot of young, a lot of young niggas diving in my DM, like yeah. niggas I never met, niggas I never seen a day in my life. Oh, uh, you know me. I'm I, I was ready to check the ass, mm-hmm. ready to bite the ear, like bite Tyson. And I say, hold on, I had to think about it. I say, hold on, let me go fool. <laughs> oh, yeah, real quick first, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I got yeah. said we got a lot yeah. of good feedback, and it did stop a lot of youngins in the city, in the city that had the open mind to listen to the shit. That's important. Like you know, what I'm saying not what they was doing or what they was hitting out to do. Damn. So that, that shit makes me happy. What man. you're doing. You're doing what you're doing, it it is saving people life. I appreciate that. That shit just made me happy because that's my core. That when I started this thing, that's what I wanted to do—not to glorify this shit, but to to te- to to let you guys come on this on the show and tell your story. Let OGs come on the show, tell their story, and and to these kids who are listening, right, is this something you want to do? You know what I'm saying? Is this something right, you want to do? I wasn't to jump yeah. up on that with you. I on that to let you know that cause I had my, my, my DM was flooded. That's dope. I was like, I don't know, like fuck it would, but it was like. Little niggas telling me, telling me, you know, they stories of what they was going through. So, uh, they, uh, and they took what we said on our interview, and they helped them get over whatever they was going through. And so this every day, some of them we still talk to, some of them we still met there, just put them on the right track. Now someone's trying to put them down with us, we just try to keep them on the right track and whatever they doing. I appreciate you sharing that, homie. That made my day, dog. Anybody, no. uh, anybody else want to chime in and, and promote anything? Uh, this is Phantom Loke. Um, I just want to say this for um, for the people that be in the comments, you know, saying talking all negative and all that. Don't be bashing just because we like. I'm talking about like people from our area. Don't be bashing because you know what I'm saying. You don't understand something that we do. What you gotta understand is like not all of us grew up in the DMV culture. Like 
for instance, like, you know what I'm saying, you have people like me that are basically outcasts of, you know what I'm saying, the neighborhoods that we come from and all that, and we really couldn't, like, really relate or was never, like, really connected with it, even though we were living in the neighborhood and all that. You know what I'm saying? Some of us, you know, didn't really roll with, like, or, like, we didn't roll with, like, people with, from our neighborhood, so we just find this, you know what I'm saying? We, we adopted this, not, not adopted, but, like, it like it gravitated it gravitated around us naturally, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like no get with shit or anything like that, like Yeah, like oh like oh these niggas just woke up one day being just wanna be crip. Like nah. Like especially for me and my uh, niggas my homies that's in the car right now, this shit like bending us up. So we were just talking about this shit just the other day, like um our stories of how we get and I hope like next interview we're able to actually tell our stories of how we got involved in yeah, tripping and all that. Yeah, definitely want to do that for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, like you know what I'm saying. Like it wasn't no get with thing. You know what I'm saying. It's something that's been always in us. You know, and like if people just keep on bashing because they don't understand it, then that's their problem. But don't try like step on our toes just because we find something that we find ourselves connected to, and we're passionate about, and it's not your way. Some shit works for different people. Some shit don't. Don't bash on it. If you're bashing, you ain't got nothing else better to do, and you need to go find a life, or at least a pussy or some shit like that, hopefully. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's all I got to say about that shit, because that's kind of low. I'm <laughs> Most of these dudes definitely don't get pussy, so anybody who has time to comment on the YouTube channel probably don't get a lot of pussy. They can't. They, they can't <laughs> be getting some pussy. Oh, what's sure. even worse is they girl getting their back going out while they comment. That's probably, or that. <laughs> somebody the, else. One or the other, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's so many women that outnumber us by eight to one ratio. Exactly. My man. Like, how are you not basking in the, you know, the festivity, bro? Nah, you got to be a con. You got to be a YouTube jam, gangster. Bro. YouTube gangsters. A lot of YouTube gangsters. <laughs> YouTube gangsters. <laughs> I realized that when I started this shit. So they be tubing. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else before we uh, we wrap it up? Anybody else got anything they want to promote? Uh, I mean, it's a little hard on Swift. I don't got nothing pretty much to promote right now, but I do. I am like an entrepreneur and things like that. And I do, I do do drop shipping and things like that. So, like when I get my stuff set up, I'll definitely put my information out there, though. Sounds good, homie. Sounds good. Spread the positivity. Yeah, yo, I appreciate you guys, man. Like I said, um, Phantom Swift Avenue Trey, I appreciate you bringing um, Psycho and Lil Swift through, man. It's definitely been a pleasure. I look forward to doing this. Like I said, maybe every few months, just catching up with you guys. Maybe we'll set one up for, let's say, like April or May or something like that. Sound good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll be in touch oh, yeah. with you, Phantom. You already know. I'll be in touch with you, Phantom. You guys be safe out there, hey, man. We, we just want to say one thing before, just to, um, you know, say before you, we end this. Go shit. for it. We just want to say one thing. Rolling! Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. There it is, homie. All right, y'all. Be safe out there, all right? All right. Peace, all right. man. I'll talk to you guys soon. Be safe.